well, not only is Jupiter the largest planet in our solar system, it's now also the planet with the most moons. Astronomers discovered 12 more moons orbiting the gas giant using a high-powered telescope in Hawaii about tw 20 months ago. And that brings the total number of moons orbiting Jupiter to 92. Saturn has the second most moons with 83, followed by Uranus and Neptune. And in comparison, Mercury and Venus both have zero. Joining us right now is Adam Frank. He's a professor of astrophysics at the University of Rochester in New York. He's also the author of Light of the Stars, Alien Worlds, and the Fate of Our Earth. Professor Frank, so good to see you. Good to see you again. <laughs> Great, so what can we learn from these findings? Uh, well, the main thing that you learn from this is that Jupiter, which is, you know, the king of the solar system, um, has this enormous capacity just to hoover in everything, right? Jupiter is um, a giant vacuum cleaner for space <laughs> debris, which is really important for us because we might not be here if it wasn't for Jupiter acting kind of like the big brother of the solar system and clearing material out that normally might have pummeled the Earth and sterilized. The, the big so magnet. more evidence of that <laughs> role that Jupiter plays. Right. So, so NASA now is, is expected to launch a mission next year that will visit Jupiter and its moon Europa. Uh, tell us a little bit about Europa. What makes this moon so important? Yeah, Europa's insane. I mean, in, into solar, and we didn't know this like a while back when I was a kid. Europa has an ocean. Europa actually has twice the amount of water that Earth does. Um, yeah. So its ocean is larger. It's 100 miles deep, and it's covered yes. by a 10 mile thick layer of ice. So who knows what is down there? There could be an in entire aquatic um, uh, um, uh, ecosystem down yeah. there. So the discovery that, that we had these ocean moons, and there's others in around the large, uh, large planets as well, really was groundbreaking in terms of understanding whether there's other places for life in the solar system. Forget the universe, just in the solar yeah. system. So with that much water, frozen or otherwise, it's it's almost certain in your view that there would be some forms of life. Well, I wouldn't go that far as no? a scientist. Okay. I have to be very conservative. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but it's the thing that's really cool is the Jupiter is so big, its gravity is constantly twisting the insides <laughs> of Europa, turning it into kind of warm taffy. And so then at the bottom of that 100 mile uh, deep ocean, you could have thermal vents where there's all kinds of chemical shenanigans going on. And that's the kind of place where you might expect life to start. We think life started that way on Earth. So, but the problem for us is how do you get through six miles of ice, right? I mean, yeah. that's a that's a pretty, even the guys in Minnesota would have a hard time getting through uh, that much <laughs> ice. So we still don't really even know how to probe down there, but it certainly is, it is one of the most profound mysteries uh, in the solar system, mm -hmm. so it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it is. I like shenanigans, I like the way you put it. Uh, so elsewhere in outer space of NASA's Curiosity rover uh, found some of the clearest yeah. evidence yet of an ancient lake on Mars. And scientists say it's the best evidence of water and waves they've seen this entire mission. So why is this significant? And is how promising might it be? Can we just have a moment before we do anything else to freak out yes. about that picture? Those are like four billion year old waves. Those are like when you walk it on is the beach amazing. and you see the ripples Right, and this is another planet, and these are those are four billion years old. <laughs> I mean, there weren't even dinosaurs here yet. So, so okay, now I got to get past that. Yeah, um, like the, but so what matters, what matters about this <laughs> is that it's actually really concrete evidence. We've been building up evidence that Mars, which right now is a frozen desert, once had oceans or at least huge lakes mm. with water rippling up on the surface. Um, uh, of and. and this is the perfect place mm -hmm. for life to get started. So this is really clear evidence that Mars, first of all, underwent some pretty dramatic climate change. You want to talk yeah. about climate change? Oh um, my gosh. But that also Mars, maybe still under the ground in Mars, that life has managed to hold on. Maybe there are microbes just, you know, mm -hmm. a couple of meters below that surface, which are still kind of, you know, hanging on and doing their thing there still.